Yeah. March 30th. Okay, ready? 2012. Yep. Last off. Well, I'm John Barnett. This is uh, Dr. Bob, Bob Little uh, from Saul Ross University, and um, I'm very privileged to own the Livermore Ranch, which, as you can see in the background, we've owned it since 1992, and we've known about the history of the Livermore Points uh, since we bought the ranch, and it's uh, he's come today to to show us some of the points that are, are kept in the uh, at at Saul Ross at the at the uh, Museum of the Big Ben, and he's going to tell you a little bit about how the, these points were found and the significance of them. And we've got some to show you. So, Bob. Well, the uh, the cache was placed by nomadic Indians. We archaeologists call them the Livermore phase or Livermore culture, and they they were nomadic Indians. And about uh, 1200 A.D., about 800 years ago, they went to the top of Mount Livermore. And they made a ceremonial placement, an offering basically, right on the top, the highest point of the summit of Mount Livermore. And at that time, we don't know whether they did it in a, as a single event or whether they went back several times and, and placed more points there, but they placed almost 2,000 uh, Livermore Air points in a single pit on the top of the mountain, and they covered the, they covered the pit with what we call a cairn or stack of rock. And it sat there until unmolested until 1895 when two guys that were up there uh, on a weekend trip to the top of the mountain uh, discovered it. And uh, they dug most of the cairn up. They found hundreds of points and the word got out about it. And there was a lady by the name of Susan Janes that uh, lived in uh, Fort Davis. And she eventually went up to the mountain seven more times and, and took groups of people with her and they collected more and more points out of this cache, it's what we call a cache. Uh, and, and then eventually she pulled all those pieces of the collection back together and in 1929 placed the cache at the Museum of the Big Bend at Solwell State University. The people who actually placed the cache were uh, hunters and gatherers, highly ritualistic people uh, we know now, and we're learning a lot about them. Uh, they uh, traveled in small bands. Uh, we see aspects of their ritual life in their rock art and in their their, bur their burials and in their caches. There have been other caches found that they had placed. And they essentially evolved around the Davis, in and down, around the Davis Mountains as the central part of their territory. And the mountain itself, Mount Livermore, was, a, we believe, a very important part of their ritual life, of their religion, if you will. They were highly shamanistic people. Uh, you, you, the shamanism is reflected in their rock art and in the caches and other things that they left behind. And uh, they, we know now that, they, they, uh, that women could serve as shamans within their group or healers, if you will, uh, and that they probably were highly egalitarian people uh, and lived a lot of their uh, uh, cultural, their, their material cultures related to hunting. They did a lot of hunting as well as processing wild plants and everything to make a living. We don't know what size of the population was with the Livermore culture, but we know at, at about uh, 1300 to 1350 they, they are gone. They disappear and are replaced by other people here. Uh, they used rock shelters as places to live, as well as open campsites. Uh, they, we find evidence of these people in just about every niche and cranny you could find uh, out in these mountainous areas. They worked, they lived within a territory. They traveled uh, within a set territory and we've been able to figure out what that territory was on the basis of where their artifacts are found. And we know that they, they covered a fairly good size in most, if not all, of the Trans-Pecos, Texas area. But not far beyond the Trans-Pecos. They were pretty much centered in the Trans-Pecos, that culture. Well, that's just fantastic, and uh, I think uh, when we bought the ranch in 92, we knew that it was quite a blessing to own this ranch, and uh, these are the kind of things that make it even more special. And 
so glad you came today and all the men that you've talked to. We've all been very impressed with what you've told us, and I think we all have a better understanding of how we need to protect uh, these types of things for the for our children for the future. So uh, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And I guess we're going to show some of the points now. So. My pleasure.